Hey developers, welcome to MAG Studio and in this video I would like to talk about SOLID, the first five principles of object-oriented programming that are essential for building working software. In case you didn't know it, in computer programming the SOLID principles acronym was introduced by Michael Feathers for five principles that were defined by Robert Martin in the early 2000s. As you know, to get a working software, we should have a low coupling, high cohesion, and strong encapsulation, which is something that the solid principles help us obtain. The idea is that by applying those principles together, you are able to write better quality code that is robust. The system created becomes easy to maintain, to reuse, and to extend over time. Basically, solid principles help software developers to achieve scalability and avoid that your code breaks every time you face a change. Okay, let's start with the basics. Solid principles stand for single responsibility, open closed, list of substitution, interface segregation, and dependency inversion. Let's look at each principle individually to understand why solid can help developers to build quality software. So let's start with single responsibility principle, which states there should be never more than one reason for a class to change. As you can see, this principle states that an object should only have one responsibility and that it should be completely encapsulated by the class. Here, when we talk about a responsibility, we mean a reason to change. This principle will lead to a stronger cohesion in the class and looser coupling between dependency classes, better readability, and code with lower complexity. It is much more difficult to understand and edit a class when it has a various responsibilities. So if we have more than one reason to change, the functionality will be split into two classes and each will handle its own responsibility. When a class has more than a single responsibility, those responsibilities become coupled and this coupling can lead to a fragile code base that is difficult to refactor when your requirements emerge. The next one, open closed principles which states, software entities should be open for extension but closed for modification. Here the idea is that an entity allows its behavior to be extended but never by modifying its source code. Any class should be written in such a way that it can be used as is. It can be extended if need be, but it can never be modified. You can consider this when you are writing your classes. Use the class in any way you need but modifying its behavior comes by adding new code never by modifying the old. The same principle can be applied to modules, packages, and libraries. By applying the open-closed principle, you will get a loose coupling, you will improve readability, and finally, you will be reducing the risk of breaking existing functionalities. The next one, list of substitution. Subtypes must be substitutable for their base types. As its name says, Liskov's substitution principle was defined by Barbara Liskov. The idea here is that objects should be replaceable by instances of their subtypes without affecting the functioning of your system from a client point of view. Basically, instead of using the actual implementation, you should always be able to use a base class and get the result you were waiting for. Often, when we want to represent an object, we model our classes based on their properties, but instead of that, we should actually be putting more of our focus on the behaviors. This principle basically confirms that our abstractions are correct and help us to get code that is easily reusable and class hierarchies that are very easily understood. The next one, interface segregation principle, which states, classes that implement interfaces should not be forced to implement methods that do not use. Here, it's about how to write interfaces. So what is stated? Basically, once an interface is becoming too large, we absolutely need to split it into small interfaces that are more specific, and their interface will be defined by the clients that will use it, which means that the client of the interface will only know about the methods that are related to them. Actually, if you add methods that shouldn't be there, the classes implementing the interfaces will have to implement those methods as well. That's why the client shouldn't be forced to depend on interfaces they don't use. This principle is intended to keep a system decoupled and thus easier to refactor, change, and deploy. And the last one, dependency inversion principle, which states high-level modules should not depend on low-level modules. Rather, both should depend on abstraction. And abstraction should not depend on details. Rather, detail should depend on abstractions. This principle is primarily concerned with reducing dependencies amongst the code modules. 
Basically, the dependency inversion principle will be a great help when it comes to understand how to correct the entire system together. If your implementation detail will depend on the higher level abstractions, it will help you to get a system that is coupled correctly, also it will influence the cohesion and encapsulation of that system. So when developing any software, there are two concepts that are very important. Coupling can be seen as a degree of dependence of a class, method or any other software entity, and cohesion, when different parts of a system will work together to get better results than if each part would be working individually. Coupling is usually present in a lot of code, and as I mentioned earlier, the optimal situation would be to have a low coupling and high cohesion. With this brief introduction to the five solid principles, you must have understood that they help us when it comes to that. There are so many principles in software engineering, and I would recommend that before writing code, do your research, read and try to understand these principles, although it may seem like a lot. Solid becomes a part of you and your code by using it continuously and adapting its guidelines. I hope you enjoyed this video and hit the bell for more interesting videos and thanks for watching.